I want to start off by saying thank you to each of you for allowing us to come into your home today to help share your son, your brother's story. What better way to tell that story than through the people that knew him and loved him the most. Parents, describe each of your three sons and, and maybe what makes them unique and, and yeah. different from one another. Yeah, they, they definitely uh, are three different personalities. Um, although Trent, as he's getting older, is coming out of his shell, but he was always kind of the quiet, cerebral one and really didn't have much to say, right? And then Ty is, uh, was our, our middle boy, was our extrovert and uh, always had a lot to say, right? Um, and that always had a, had a big personality. And then um, Tate was kind of a combination of the two. Um, he spoke out when he needed to, um, but he also kind of had that little quiet, cerebral approach to him, um, you know? So he was kind of a blend between Trent and Ty, you know? I think so. <clears throat> You had a mix of all three per se. Tate was that good mix of, of yeah. both of you two. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Did he always kind of have that quiet demeanor in a way, Tate? Um. No, not really. I mean, you know, he 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 was actually the the most social of the of the three when he was really young. Um, so, you know, he just. You know what I mean. He was quiet and see, cerebral. What what I, what I mean is, he he didn't always feel like he had to talk. You know, so even though he was a he was a super social kid, um, he was a really good listener. And uh, you know, as a as a dad, when I would um, have talks with him, sometimes he would take the words out of my mouth, like. Yeah, yeah, you've told me that before, Dad. I've heard that, right? So he was listening all the time. So, you know, so that's, he, he was a pretty good listener, which kind of forced him to be quiet. Yeah. Do you think that's a trait that you both instilled in him, or that was just, that was Tate, that was natural? I think that was Mom. You know, I think um, Mom doesn't, I'm the vocal one, you know, I'm, and I'm actually the emotional one, right? I'm the one that gets fired up in a hurry, and, and she's mom is a bit more mellow, and when when mom speaks, the boys listen. And so does dad. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think Tate was a probably more like his mom than he was me. I would think, you know. So um, he was pretty calculated. Ma mom is very calculated. Yep. I know there's a lot of traits people would use to describe him, him being a good listener, one of many. Um, how would you guys all describe who Tate was? Man. Um, I'd say a lot of his friends would say he was very fun, right? He was always trying to get kit, bring kit people together, trying to just have a really good time, you know, when, when people were down or people were arguing, he was always bringing people together. Whenever, whatever that was, hanging out at the tiki bar, playing volleyball, you know, just doing a board game, whatever it was. He was always trying to bring people together. And then um, he was always trustworthy, too. You know, you could always trust what Tate said is what he was going to do. So. Uh, I, I'd probably say um, probably lovable. He was always super lovable. And to anyone, um, he'd meet someone new and not knowing their past or maybe even knowing their past, he won't discriminate them or judge them based on their past or maybe what they look like. He always showed love to people. And I think that's what was just so great about him. And even though me and him had arguments a lot growing up and it really started to show how much we loved each other these past couple of years because we got to spend a lot more time together, me and him. And it really just showed a lot more of his traits because we were spending a lot more time together. Like the listening trait was one of the big ones. He would always listen to the crap I would have to say. <laughs> uh, I'd have to say trustworthy and dependable. I mean, if you ask his friends, 
adults, anybody, those would be two big ones. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, for me, it, it's, it's genuine. Like, I, I think that's why people were drawn to Tate. He was a super genuine kid, and I think that's why it was, it was easy to follow him because everything he said was so genuine and real that you wanted to follow him. You know, you wanted him to lead. You know, what was unique is when we were growing up, because um, Tate has a Tate was able to connect with boys and girls. He had a, a, a group of girlfriends that he was really good friends with, and you know when we were when the boys were growing up, we would um, hang out with uh, a couple families that they had two older boys and one younger girl, or one older boy and one younger girl. But so the and Tate was our youngest, so Tate was always stuck playing with the girl, mm -hmm. and you know he never really thought much of it. You know, I mean, he would get the girl to come do boy things with him and but yet he would sit down and do crafts or whatever with her right so he was very unique that way and i and i think that's why he was able to connect with so many people i think that kind of laid a pretty amazing foundation really from from being exposed to hanging out with with some girls when he was younger all the time it was cool Yep. Sounds like he was so wise beyond his years, too. Definitely. Yep. Yeah, he was. He, he was very, very smart. Very smart. Um, you know, when you, you know, Trent um, has our, does our social media for 42 Strong, and, you know, when we have a Tate Trait Tuesday, and um, so every Tuesday, Trent will, Channel Post, uh, uh, we, one of his traits, we have 12 of them. That's the foundation of our organization. And every one, when I, when I, when every Tuesday pops up, I'm like, man, how did that kid know that? Like, how did he know that? Right? So, um, he was crazy wise beyond his years, but I think a lot of it was, um, you know, he's the youngest, he's hanging out with his older brothers, he's watching them. He's watching mom and dad. He's absorbing everything. And he was very mature for his age. Very mature. Yeah, he, he was more mature than they were at his age, for sure. Right? And I think it's just a product of having older brothers. Yeah, two older brothers to look up to and, and learn from. Yeah. Is there maybe some traits that you, people wouldn't realize about Tate? I mean, maybe that was it, the fact that he really could get along with everyone? I think empathy like, I think that's a trait that, you know, it's not in our top 12 that we put in our foundation, but Tate had a lot of empathy. He could, he could feel for people, right? And uh, I think that's, that's one that, that I like that probably a lot of people don't know about. I'd say probably caring. Like, obviously, everybody, you know, everybody cares to a point and says they care and shows a little bit, but Tate kind of took it to the next level with how he, how he was there for people, you know, how he cared for them. And there was this one time, um, our dad was choking at the dinner table. Oh, I was choking on my food. Yes. He was choking on his food and me and Ty were just like laughing. Cause like we knew he was fine, but Tate got up like all freaked out and was like, like about to give you the, what the highlight like, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was, <laughs> Tate was freaking out, but that just showed like how, how much he cares. Right. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, boy. I know another big attribute of him as well is obviously his leadership. Was that always there from a young age as well? For sure. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, we didn't notice it from uh, on the athletic stage till he got older. Um, but at school, you know, he got the, for his elementary, when, when they did the fifth grade graduation, he got the Wildcat Award, um, which is handpicked by the principal. Um, so that there showed us, even though we weren't at school every day seeing it, that showed us that he was, he was leading there and, and, and leading by example. Um, from an athletic point of view, I would say it started in, would you guys say eighth grade? Eighth grade freshman year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he started, he kind of, he, he was, uh, um, he was a pudgy bubby, right? Growing up and, 
and then he kind of sprouted up and he, he this this new confidence came in eighth grade and um you know i think all those talks on the rides home from baseball games you know we were, we were planting the seeds years ago when he was young and then now things are starting to sprout right and and you know when he hit his eighth grade and freshman year he just became he's like i want to be the guy i want to one i want to be the one who leads us and uh it was amazing to watch. He was not afraid to be the leader and and take it for the team. Yep, yep. But that didn't that did it, that was a, a a battle getting there, right? Um, you know, when he was younger, he was when we were playing travel baseball. He uh, he was always the first one to cry whenever he'd strike out. He was just crying. It was nonstop, and then the whole game would be over. Right? We're in the first inning. Tate's batting clean up. He strikes out in the first inning. The whole game's over, right? Because he, he's crying and, and he's not having any fun, right? So, you know, um, we finally talked. And at first I was getting angry about it because I was like, you're not supposed to be having fun. This is a sport, you know? And um, and then I, I, I realized, because Ty was that way, and, um, you know, as a, as a dad, I'm like, well, I don't think I dealt with it the right way with Ty and I'm going to learn something from it. Right. So, you know, so I started really talking about just focusing on other people, like quit worrying about your strikeouts, quit worrying about any of that. Like all these personal, like, don't worry about it. Like be a good teammate. Like you could go over three, but if we win, that's awesome. Right. Did you make everybody around you better? So that's what we, what we started focusing on and what we started talking about. He needed to take the, pressure off himself and quit worrying about himself like that stuff will come you'll get good right but if you focus on you you're never going to get good and you're never going to win because you need everybody else around you to be better so you know once we once he figured that out i mean i think i think really that was last year junior year was a culmination of all right yep yep he gets it right and his teammates get it Right, and he's bringing everybody together. Last year was special. Last year was special. That was a unique, unique season because they started out so rough, and and uh, you know, I would just, you know, we didn't talk a lot of football when he got home, but you know, for for mom and I, we would just keep telling him to yeah, keep. No distractions. Don't let anything in the locker room, like, shut it down. Like, buy into what the coaches are coaching. Buy into each other. Stay on the same page. Because at some point it's going to click. And that's what they did as a team. And they made a great run and got in the playoffs. So it was, I was, we were proud as, as parents to, to see that, that he was a, he was a part of that him embracing that kind of we over me mentality and, and spreading that amongst his teammates. Do you feel that when that moment finally clicked, you know, that's him being such a big part of that is really what changed the trajectory of, of last year's team? Yeah. I mean, it takes a team, right? No doubt. Um, but, you know, he was one of the captains last year. Uh, when your captain is selfless, your captain is um, doing all the right things, um, it's easy for people to buy in. And he was so genuine, right? So, you know, I, I, I think it was really easy for the whole team to buy into that. You know, it's, it's, it's special. It's awesome. I love it. That's what, that's what team sports is about getting in the trenches with each other and figure, finding your role because everybody brings a different skill set and parents get out of the way, even coaches. Like, coaches get out of the way and doesn't matter what scheme you're running. If the kids come together and believe in each other and will play for each other, that's magic, right? And that's what we, we encourage all our boys to do that.
the maturity level is is just incredible and there's too many traits to name I know you said mm -hmm. you only have 12 is it <laughs> yeah. within the foundation but I know three words that mean a lot are trust love and build that was the foundation of our family was trust there were some other things that we would that we would that were a little negotiable but trust was not negotiable so I'll let the boys talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. yeah no so the first you know the first thing is trust right that's what we base this foundation off of you know um, you know if you don't have trust with your friends your peers your teammates you know you don't have anything right you need to build up that trust right and that ta that takes time right it's not going to come overnight but when you build trust with people right that's when you can start loving them right so that gets to our, to our second pillar love right so when you have trust you can start loving each other that's when you can start forming that bond right and once you get to love you get to our third pillar build right so once you have trust and love that's where you can start building something really special and that's what happened that last football season right they made it took a couple of games for them to start trusting each other but they did right and then they started loving each other right hanging out you know after after the game or on thursdays before at team dinner they started loving each other right and then that's when they started building something really special so tate took those three things very seriously and that kind of you know that's who tate was yeah. yeah i'd say um trent said it really good um just trusting each other from once you get to know a person let's say and you start trusting them, and you start building that relationship, just once you have those first two things, trust and love, and then once you get to build, that's where just everything and all the magic happens, and a friendship, a team, or even a business. I just think that um, those three things are very important that people should take with them through life. Yeah, building's easy. Mm -hmm. Building something's easy, but if you don't have the foundation of trust and love like you know sherry and i are what are we on 23 or 24 years i don't know I'm, right Something but like you know and 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 we are far from per we have far from a perfect marriage but you know at the end of the day we trust each other 100 percent, right so you know i don't see why that's not a foundation of everything we do in our world is building trust with people and we got we got those three things, you know, trust, love, and build. We got that from his interview. This is where we live. Rain is just like actual football. Tough, muddy. Everything about us is tough. We came back. We grinded. Worked every day. We had trust each other. We all love each other. And we just started building there week by week by week. And here we are. He said it. We did. The kid was, the kid was amazing. Just so amazing and so wise beyond his years. He didn't rehearse that. That was that was just a kid on the football field after a great win, and he just spoke from his heart, and it was mm -hmm. it's powerful. It's a big thing here in here in Oxford now. Um, you know, he just he they, a lot of people say he after this tragedy that he laid the roadmap. He laid down the roadmap for her, for everybody to bounce back from this. You know, we're not gonna, we're, you know, everything about us is tough. We didn't quit, we came back, we grinded, worked every day, trust each other. You know, I mean, he's, he's laying the roadmap to, our, for our community to bounce back from this. No doubt. He laid the foundation, naming those three big pillars. Yeah. I mean, it, it probably didn't take much thinking for you guys to figure out what the base of the 42 Strong Foundation would be. Right. No, it, it, it didn't at all. We figured out that we wanted to do Tate's traits as the foundation, as kind of the core values and beliefs of, of the organization. And we kind of wanted a mantra, you know, and um, we, were, we were sitting at a board meeting with, Trent, Ty, myself, a um, good friend of mine, Scott Claxton, Crystal Wilder, Jenna Elling, and Zach Lyon, who's the head coach. And he, he 
checks his phone and he's like, look at this. And I look at it. He's like, trust, love, build. So his wife, Mackenzie, was at home, um, you know, because he must have been sharing with her that we're trying to come up with that, what the mantra of our organization was going to be. And she pulled that trust, love, build out of that interview. And it was, it just, right when he showed it to me, and I'm like, man, that's it. So when choosing peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, why that mission or connection to Tate? Well, Tate, what, you know, what we found out after November 30th was Tate was doing a lot of that. Um, that's all he was doing when he was at school, really, was mentoring and, and trying to make a difference in, in kids' lives. And, you know, the stories that we heard, we had a couple parents reach out to us, you know, it was amazing to hear, and, and it kind of got me thinking back, you know, in my high school years, there was probably three dudes that that kind of looked after me and, uh, you know, kind of showed me the way. And uh, it's powerful. It's powerful when when one of your peers are holding you accountable and, um, and looking after you. So, um, you know, when... When the idea was brought to us um, by Crystal Wilder, who Tate had mentored her son, um, I was like, yeah, let's do it. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer, and what, what out, who, who else out there is doing it? Nobody. It's a simple idea. There's nothing complicated about it, and nobody's doing it. So we're doing it now, and that's, that's how... Tate's legacy will live on forever. What is the value that you all see in that peer-to-peer -peer mentoring? Because it is so, so important because it's not being done enough. Right. Um, you know, I think there's a lot more value in peer-to-peer -peer than, you know, there's mentorship programs out there where it's like, you know, an adult to a kid, which is always good, right? We all need to be mentored and taught things. But, you know, there's something about peer-to-peer -peer where they have that connection, right? There's only like a three-year age gap. They're going through the exact things that that middle school kid is going through, right? Or just went through it, right? They're going through that social media thing. They're going, they went through that middle school year to high school year transition, right? So they know how to navigate, you know, the world at this time, right? And teach them the things that they've learned from. So, uh, I, th I think it's very important because, um, some of those, some of the, some kids, um, for example, the, the kid that did this, um, they need someone, they need a friend and there, there's lots of kids like that out there and it's, it's sad and we want to get those kind of kids in our program so nothing like this can ever happen again. Those kids that sit at lunch by themselves or have their headphones in, not just minding their own business in the hallway, never really talk to anybody. Those are the kids we want. Not, we're not saying that those are all at-risk kids for these kind of things, but those kind of kids need love. They need someone to be there for them. And I think that's very important because I had a time in my life where I was going through something and I had someone there for me. And I don't know where I'd be at right now if it wasn't for that person. So I think that everyone needs a special someone that they can make a great connection with, that they can look up to. And it sounds like Tate was the kind of person that would gravitate towards those people and want to help. He didn't discriminate. Yeah, he looked after everybody. He cared for everybody. He really did. I think it was just natural for him. Very. You know, I mean, whether going to the middle school um, with his peers in class, during sports, um, he went to the local training facility, ETS. He'd work with kids there, wrestling practice. He'd stay after and work with the little kids. So I think it was just natural for him just to want to help people and mentor them, whether he knew he was doing it or not. And, you know, I think one thing that's underrated is, is you feel good when you help people, right? And I, and I think that was one thing that, that fed Tate, like it made him feel really good when he was helping people. And, you know, so one of the huge advantages of, of, of this program is 
yeah, the mentees are getting a lot of value out of it for sure, right? They're looking up to all these older kids and, wow, I got a, I got a, I got a junior who's my mentor and you know, I went and had a burger with them, right? Or whatever, right? But the mentors are getting great value out of it. They're, you know, they're, they're learning how to be accountable and think about somebody else. Um, you know, they have to f find a way to fit this into their schedule, right? It's, it's teaching, it's going to give them self-confidence. Um, our mentors are getting a lot out of it. It's, it's great value up and down the board for mm -hmm. mentors and mentees. It's awesome. It sounds like this is the kind of program that Tate would want. Mm -hmm. The success so far that you've seen, do you expect it to, you know, get to that to that level so quickly? No, I, we weren't sure what to, you know, we weren't sure what to expect. Yeah, we got 250 kids in our program right now. And um, so for this year, we're not matching anymore because there's the science behind uh, the matching and the mentoring is anything less than nine months can be detrimental. So we've passed that nine, ho nine month threshold. So what we're still accepting kids into the program, they can still do all of our training, come to all our event, all of our events. We just won't match them until next spring on our, on our match day. But what we want to, we know what the values. So what, so Oxford is really, the community has really stepped up and, and wants to be a part of fixing things here, right? This community was shattered by what happened. So it's easy to get 250 mentors here, but what if we want to take this to a neighboring community like Clarkston or Lake Orion? Now, it hit close to home for them, but it didn't hit their home. So, you know, are they going to, are the kids, the student body going to be as interested in in becoming part of this. So, you know, I, I think one thing that we need to prove, and we're working um, right now collecting some, some data, um, what we need to prove is your community needs peer, peer mentoring. There's, and here's why, right? So um, we're collecting some, we, we, we have our, our mentors and mentees at our monthly gathering. We have a monthly gathering every month. We have them take a little survey, and it's very simple, and it's just about how you feel, well-being. So, you know, and it's the sad emoji face to, you know, the happy to the happy with the with the heart eyes, right? And um, it's just as simple as that, like how you, how you feeling. And, you know, so we're collecting that data to see you know, where it was at the beginning of our program and where it's going to be at the end, you know, from a, a nine month span and, um, you know, gather that data and we're working with Oakland University and William Beaumont. We're partnering with them, um, but they're going to help kind of decipher that data and give us those results. And we're going to be able to prove that peer mentoring is, is good and you need it in your community. So it sounds like other communities and cities are gravitating towards that idea. Yes, there is. There is lots of chatter that uh, other communities want it. So we're going to make it really good here first. You know, my, my buddy Scott likes to always say we're going to gold plate this because the kids in our community deserve this for what our communities went through. So we're going to make it perfect here. And when we're ready, we'll take it to surrounding communities and I, you know, we feel like it's gonna gonna grow like a wildfire. It's a it's a novel, unique idea. Nobody's doing it, so we're not excited for the. You know, Sherry and I talk about it all the time. Um, you know, we're bummed why we have to do it, and Sherry gets mad that. We shouldn't have to be doing this. And she's right. We shouldn't have to be doing this. But we're doing it. And um, we need to try to change our little part of the world that we live in. And, um, you know, the only way we can do that is bringing people together. Our world's too divided right now. 
everybody's worried about what political affiliation you are and you know how many likes you get on Facebook or your whatever your Instagram links. I don't know. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sure there are so many moments and and times when you feel like Tate is right here with you all the time. Are there any specific moments or things that that make you feel like he's right here with you guys? Um, you know, I get, I definitely get those sometimes. I, I can't honestly can't even think of some off the top of my head, but um, one one that I can think of is um, back in December, January, when I started going back to work. At the time, I was working at a car wash, and it was towards the end of my shift, and I just was having a rough day, and I would always have to take the receipts from customers. And I took one from a customer, and on it just said, Jesus loves you. And I kind of like just started to cry right there. And I've, I kind of felt like that was a message from Tate, just to let um, me know that he loves me. And, you know, there's just tons of different times that we feel like he's with us. Like, the amount of times the number 42 is on something or... There's 42 of this. I look at something, there's the number 42. It's it's always somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I know that he's always with us. Um, for, for me, um, yeah, they, driving, I feel like he's with me a lot when I'm driving. Um, you know, because we, him and I got to take a um, road trip down to Toledo for a recruiting trip a, week, a couple of days before this happened. And, uh, you know, so um, I feel like, you know, that was kind of our last father-son time together was on the road in a truck going down to a recruiting visit. So so driving, I feel like I have a connection with him. Um, you know, when I sit, I don't sit in his room that much anymore, um, but when I feel like I need to feel connected, I go sit in his room. Um, so um, he's with us. Um, we voted for captains last year or last week, and um, Coach Lyon was telling me a story how he was in the coach's office and he just grabbed a stack of construction paper and put in a paper cutter and just started cutting it, stacking it. And then he gets a stack of cards for the boys to write on for, for captain vote. He had to count them out, make sure he had enough. So he counted them out. It's 42. So, you know, he told that, that story to the boys, like Tate's with us for this captain's vote. Right. So yeah, he's, he makes his little appearances. Um, you know, um, I feel like he's with us more than he's not, for sure, right? And I feel like that, um, you know, he's looking down when not wanting us to be sad. But it's hard. It's hard. For you to help the team out and coach this year, do you feel that also brings you closer to him as well, being around his friends and, and yeah, I, yeah, a little bit. You know, I, I'd like to know what they think. Really, um, you know, it, it makes me wonder if you know my approach to things and how I talk and my demeanor. If it feels like they, it's an old Tate around. I don't know. You know, I'd like to know how they feel about it you know I'm they dig having me around I think um and I like being around um I'm a little bummed that I can't engage into it more because you know we're I I'm still working full-time and we got 42 strong going and and 
I still want to spend time with Sherry and um, you know I'm finding out in a hurry that I I can't get I can't commit to it full time which bums me out because um, I feel like that's where you know you when you're spending a lot of time with with your team like that you're you're really getting to know each other and you're starting to build that trust and um, starting to lean on each other a little bit um, start showing vulnerability to each other a little bit and I think I'm kind of missing out on that because I can't be there all the time but it is what it is I you know I'm trying to balance a lot of stuff so um, but I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying it I just wish I could engage harder I think from a mom perspective I think the football boys I think they like seeing him. I think it helps them having him there. I mean, they, over the past nine months, come over all the time. And it helps me. Like, that makes it, me feel closer to Tate, being with all his friends and hearing stories still. And just so, I think it goes both ways. It helps them and it helps us. And that's still something you're seeing often, friends coming over mm -hmm. and... and sitting up in yeah. his room, I'm sure, and, and sharing those stories with you, stories you probably have never, never heard. Never heard and probably never would have heard. <laughs> right. So. They love Mrs. Mir. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, yeah. Week two of Oxford football is, is there's going to be an, an on-field dedication mm -hmm. to Tate, and Along with that, you know, the Oxford O this past year as well. What do you feel with that? You know, for me, sometimes it feels overwhelming. Um, I mean, the support's been amazing from the community. You know, with football season coming up here, you know, this happened after football season. So we got through a winter sports season and a spring, and we haven't had a fall yet. And... This was Tate's thing, football, right? So, um, you know, for me personally, I'll let these guys talk about how they're feeling. But for me, it's 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 stirring these emotions all over again. Um, you know, it's it's hard. You know, I would say um, every day I drive to football practice, I cry. Every day I drive home, I cry. Like, you know, he was. Everything that he worked for, like everything that we talked about as a family, like the senior year is coming, man. This is this is all now you're with kids in your community, and these these are kids from all different parts of your community. You know, you got we got a bunch of subdivisions around here. You got the rural kids. It's like, and everybody's from like a different demographic, but you're all coming together for a common goal. Uh, we're all from the same community, you know. We're all from different neighborhoods. We're all coming together to do something special, and this was the year to do it. And Tate was robbed of that, you know. So that sucks. He was robbed, and and he's never going to get a chance to have that special senior year. Uh, the support that has been coming in it's definitely amazing and it makes me feel good but yeah I mean kind of just what my dad was saying just like these things that I just think about and you know a month after not even a month after football season this happens to him and I mean in that short month me and him would talk about his senior season and how much I couldn't wait I never told him how much I couldn't wait to see him play one more season, especially after his junior year. And I was, I never got to say anything like that to him, you know? And yeah, just. Um. Well, obviously, like they said, the support's been amazing, right? Seeing everything across the country and obviously from our community has been absolutely amazing. You know, I just, I like it because I, 
I love when the attention's on Tate and what he did when he was here and when that's focused on, right, he left a legacy and I just want his legacy to live on and people not to forget him. What would you define Tate's legacy as and what people should think about that for forever? I'd probably say just... Um spread kindness and love because that's all he was about and it didn't matter where he was you know school uh football and I really think that's where that second half of the season just came out um is he started pouring even more love into the team and everyone started seeing it and everyone just started loving each other and and just with this world we're in right now it's we're all divided, everyone's arguing, and I think that people should just know that love is, I, I truly think that love can heal way beyond what we can even think. Yep. It's something you really can't define. You know, he did so many amazing things while he was here. You know, he cared for so many people, he was there. He was the hardest workers kid I've ever seen. Right. He trusted people. People could trust him. Right. So, you know, trust, love, build is definitely something that can carry on his legacy. And also we have our 12 Tate traits. Right. He did all those things amazingly. You know, he was accountable. He was teachable. You know, he showed he showed respect to people. He was selfless. Right. And that he wasn't just those 12 things. He was so many more. So, you know, just trying to be the best, best person you can and to impact other people's lives. Right, and you don't even need to try, right? Tate wasn't trying to impact other people, but by the things he did every day, the amazing things he did, that's the impact he had. Right? He had a positive impact on every single person he interacted with. And that's how we started this whole foundation and how he has how his just how his legacy is gonna live on. Yeah. You know, I, I think from a you know, I look at it twofold. Um you know, what kind of legacy would he have left from a football point of view? Um, I think, you know, with, with the focus of, you know, the focus that he put on his teammates and putting this we before me stuff in everybody's heads and doing it all together, you know, I, I think if he was able to to live his senior season out, I think they would have did something special and I think his biggest legacy would have been he would was would have been the greatest leader to ever walk through that program. And that's that makes me proud. That makes us that makes us proud. I think that's an that's amazing. It doesn't matter how many touchdowns you score, how many tackles you have, how many state championships you win. All that stuff's good, right? But at the end of the day, you know, were you a good leader? Did you make a did you make an impact? Um, as far as you know, his on a, on a personal level, his legacy is living on right now at forty two strong. I mean, he he did he put in that work. He put in that work before that day, and we're putting in that work after that day to make sure that his legacy lives, and his legacy will live forever because of that work that he put in.